So now, folks, I'm going to show you my really special quartz crystal. This one is in a box, a chest, because it is my favorite perfect quartz crystal. Look at this guy. Yeah, he's Jemmy. He's damn hot, Jemmy. Look at that. Such transparency, such beauty, such clarity. $25. No joke. Good God, you go to Tucson and you try to get something like this? Easily $150 or $50. Easily. Because of the clarity and everything. I mean, hello, you can see me right through it. And here's the neatest fact about it. How many faces does it have? One, two, three, four, five. But quartz has six faces. Where's the sixth face, you ask? It is actually so hidden, but it is right there. That little teeny tiny line is the sixth face. And I've always, always protected this guy in his case. I don't walk around with him. I don't always play with him a lot. I don't put him in sunlight a lot. I want him to stay pristine as the head of my quartz collection. Now here's the fun thing. I got Smokies. I love Clear. I love, you know, Amethyst. But Citrine, after a couple years of collecting, I realized I never had a big piece of Citrine to be proud of. Natural, not heat treated. Until I, of course, went online again and found this beauty right here. Wow. It's not a dark citrine. It's not a smoky citrine. But it's a light citrine from Congo. This guy was expensive. Like $95, maybe $100. But it was so worth it. My biggest citrine from Congo. And look at all the neat features. This was another crystal that went through thermal alteration or etching because, yes, you have regular sides here. I do need to polish the sides here. Very nice, gemmy. But on three other sides, other three sides, is tons of etching. This is where there was most likely calcite plates or mica plates that dissolved in the solution. Remember I have said it reheats up so it dissolves the it dissolves the softest minerals first and then goes after the big daddy quartz. So all in here you can see it dissolved all and left all those little tiny tiny slits, slots, and pockets of where all the calcite or mica or whatever mineral was used to be growing up into or against it. And here's the other little cute feature about this big old Congo citrine. Look. There's only one little teeny tiny side crystal out of this whole thing. No other crystal side crystals try to grow. <clears throat> Let me go for clusters. Mm. This is the way I got fun. <clears throat> Look at this little baby here. This is a large, pale, ametrine cluster. That's why I said it, ametrine, amethyst and citrine cluster. And this was $205. No joke. I wish I was joking. I'm not. Big fat amethyst points in this whole thing. And the amethyst has bodies to them. They're not like, you know, druzy where it's like you pop out the crystal and just the head is terminated. They actually have bodies to them. And the bodies even have almost like a sprouting growth around the heads of each of the crystal points in this giant cup. I mean, this was mind-blowing when I got it. And that's, um, well, let's get this guy out of the way first. This was, is, is by far the thickest, fattest clear quartz crystal in my entire collection. It was a steal of a deal again. Probably like 60 to $70. dollars um, It did not come with a base. It was already cut like this with a good stand. But look how big that is. That's thick. This is like two to three pounds here. It's really neat. this whole front here. Again, went through etching, hydrothermal alteration, dissolving and smearing effect. But it's, so it's a when you look at its side, it's like all bumpy and it goes down thinner. I don't, I don't, I don't get that yet. I haven't 
found by how they caused that yet. A beautiful iris, beautiful clarity in areas, you know, it's not perfect. And that's what I like about ghost crystals, is they're kind of like humans. We're not perfect, but we all can shine from the inside out. And we all have a hidden beauty to us. That's kind of the main message about how quartz crystals relate to human beings. So folks, if I'm going to talk about quartz crystals, I might as well talk about Herkimer Diamonds. I've loved Herkimer Diamonds. It is by far still one of my favorite type of quartz crystals. But this was a no-brainer when I saw it online one time. That is a 1.2 pound Herkimer Diamond. No, it's not perfectly clear. No, it's not perfectly made. No, it's not perfectly whole. No, it doesn't have an hydros. But it's got so many fractures and cracks that's full of beautiful irises. And the fact that it's a pound and the fact that it's still got a nice crystal shape to it and it actually grew like this. No joke, that's how it's grew. Boom, 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 boom. Slanted, which was another unique feature. I still wanted that odd crystal. A crystal that to me would be different than all the other crystals I would ever collect. And that's when I found this one. Look at this guy here. Wow. Yeah. Why does it look so weird? Because it is an extreme bent growth example. Yeah. This crystal should be straight up with this side. And Look at that, look at that huge fracture right there. It rehealed itself as it cracked, and the entire body of this crystal is full of teeny tiny, I wish I could get the lighting just right to show you, but look at that, look how bent he is. Yeah, they were slamming into each other, they were regrowing points here. It's phantom chlorite as well. Beautiful phantoms in there as well. Look at that. I mean, it, did, I mean even, it even this body tried to push up on it. And it couldn't. So it just went along with it. But this I grabbed. I mean, because it is the most extreme example of bent quartz in my entire collection. And the fact that it's just smashing, crashing, banging, and running into everything is just mind-blowing and amazing that now I can sit here and study one of the most... To me, geologic amazements, miracles in the geologic formation of quartz crystals. The fact that it can bend and heal and bend and keep bending. Wow. Now the other thing about my collection is I always have wanted that giant large ass crystal that's beyond all the others. It's different than any other crystal I have. This guy I got for 60. Because I told him, ma'am. I drove two hours down there with a friend, just happened to stop by. I'm never going to be back here. This is a once in a lifetime buy. 10 inches, 6 pounds. No brainer. Testing? Testing is when it is quartz point that almost has like two sets of faces. Slant and slant. This is the actual head of the crystal. This is the body and then more of the body if so. But this guy, I call him the mountain of quartz because he literally has like alligator skin growth to him or celestial growth to him. It just climbs right up there. But $60. Now, here's what I did I did polish the back. And look at that. Look how jammy the inside was. I was so surprised when I polished it. Here he is. The king of my quartz crystal collection. This guy was another one of those once in a lifetime chances. This is from Hallelujah Junction, Colorado. It's a mountain that is famous for its scepter amethyst smoky citrines. And look what I got. me A big amethyst scepter citrine. Wow, at least the head of it. But wow, I, I, I buy to buy this because again, a hundred dollars ish. Oh, double terminated. I mean, it's stunning, folks. In fact, you got the clear smoky citrine shooting up in the middle, 
and it's all surrounded with amethyst is beautiful. It's got hydros. I love water bubbles. That's when hydro is. It's got phantoms. It's got color zoning. And the growth is just, it's like a protective shell. The amethyst is like a protective shell. This one crystal is jetting through the top. I did buy another example of a smoky crystal. Beautiful, gemmy. I mean, you can see the light going right through that orangish black smoky crystal. But this one was fun. I got it from a guy, a person on Etsy, good friend, for like $60, $70. Is all of that druzy growth on the back plate. So this would have been probably up against the wall in the cavity. And all these little crystals grew off of it. It's like a whole family on the back. The fact that it has just all this growth on the back is fantastic. It makes it, again, a very unique individual specimen to have in my collection. $205 later. This guy is by far the best example of a cluster in this environment when it fractures and what happens. So you can easily see the fracture right there and here. The fracture went all the way across there. You can look in there too with the microscope, it's beautiful. And every single point that went through that fracture when it broke, broke and shifted. But they stayed there and regrowed or rehealed. All these points on here that look broken are not broken. They regrew, they regrow. They're actually seeing when you show the light in the right way. But they regrew. And the fact that these two guys just <clears throat> I had to get it. So those two beauties. I mean just all of these beautiful elongated crystals, double terminated, bent, S faces, Z's, R faces, which are rare faces that have on a cross crystal. Point. It was just like wow. Crazy. Is a five pound quartz crystal twin quartz. It was so dirty when I got it. I have a video of me cleaning this one. But the one thing that stood out to me is that this was a new type of quartz formation. Like I told you, I always want to try to get new different types of quartz growths, formations, and occurrences. And this was no different. Not only was it a wonderful phantom, but see these? It was a skeletal, large phantom quartz crystal. No brainer. And sprouting growth, too. Look at this. Look at all the sprouting growth on the edges here. The whole thing you can see is just sprouting out. My very first ever skeletal growth is like, yeah, I gotta get that. And the fact that it's so big and it fits so nicely in my hand, look at that. And like, like I said, I feel quartz crystals that you buy sometimes are meant to be grabbed by you and are made in form just so your hand can go wherever it wants you to hold it. The crystal tells you how it wants to be held by its formation. But yeah, big skeletal phantom sprouting quartz crystal cluster.